Welcome to the Called Women Podcast, a dedicated space for women ready to venture beyond the familiar and embrace the whispers of their true calling. I am your host, Natasha Miller. Join me as we dive into remarkable stories of resilience, celebrating the beauty of blooming in our own time and navigating the sometimes uncertain path to purpose. This podcast is more than an invitation for you to simply step into your unique place in God's story. This is a sacred space where your gifts are not just celebrated, but are needed. So I encourage you not to simply listen, but actively embrace the journey ahead where every episode we are specifically creating for you to make that step closer to fully realizing the extraordinary calling that awaits you. Now, before we jump into today's episode, I wanted to share a quick secret with you. We have a monthly private episode for women who are subscribed to our weekly free newsletter. So I wanna make sure that you're a part of this community because when you are a part of the newsletter, you're able to submit questions where I will personally answer them on a private episode. So if you have questions about your calling, something you wanna be coached through, or if you simply need some encouragement, you wanna make sure that you are a part of the newsletter community. Remember, this podcast isn't my podcast. This is our podcast. And I want you to get your personal questions answered. The link to subscribe to that free newsletter is in the show notes. It's also pinned in our free Facebook community. Now let's jump into today's episode. Hi, friends. Welcome to another episode of the Called Women podcast. Y'all, you are in for a treat today. This is the first episode that I'm recording in 2024. Woo-woo! So today, we're going to be chatting with an amazing woman and friend. Her name is Raven Knoll, and she is a mindset coach and counselor. She prides herself in helping women win within so that they can conquer and be successful in their professional lives. And what's even more amazing is that she is um, a master coach in our called women community. She is a part of the uh, coaching faculty. Um, If you don't know, uh, Called Women has a Christian life coaching certification program that's called Called Coach Academy. And she is uh, the coach who teaches on how to master coaching. So you guys are in a treat. So you guys are in for a treat today as she shares her journey of coming into coaching and what she's passionate about. So Raven, welcome to the Called Women podcast. Hi, Natasha. Thank you so much for having me. I am super excited to be here. Yes. And it's a treat because we get some girl time. I get to talk with her and, um, you know, be able to really have some awesome connecting moments. So Raven, I would love for you to just share even a bit more about yourself, who you are and why you are so passionate about coaching women. Well, um, I am a wife and mother. I am married to my best friend, Dr. Kenneth Knoll, and I have two small kids, Kalia and Kennington, who keep me busy and on my toes at all times. Um, Like you said, I am a mindset coach, and I like to say that I'm an inner work expert and wellness specialist because I truly am um, passionate about helping women decode and break through those inner barriers that are stopping them from unlocking their potential so they can see that success that they desire, whether it's personally or professionally and truly win from within. So that's my work. That's who I am. And that's what I love to do. (laughs) Yes. And I love that because as a mindset coach and as an inner work specialist, right, a lot of women struggle with Um, even being able to trust themselves and to trust the abilities and gifts that God's placed in their life to do. So what would you say your life looked like before you actually said and made the decision that, hey, I'm going to go out here and use my expertise to help women overcome what I was struggling in the past with? So before I gave this a yes, um, I was definitely very much so very timid. 
Um, and one of the reasons why I was very timid was because I was very fearful. I dealt with a lot of fear personally and a lot of anxiety. I talk about this publicly a lot that I had to overcome social anxiety in order to do what I felt God had called me to do, which is to use my voice as an instrument of, of um, transformation and really just helping women walk through uh, different barriers. So it's so interesting now that you see me talking and you know doing podcasts and working with individuals and using my voice all the time, but I was really muzzled and um, fearful and using my voice was extremely uh, difficult for me. It was extremely difficult to even see myself doing anything like this because I was like, let me stay behind the scenes. I don't need to do all of that. And then also just when I would try to showcase myself or showcase my talent or showcase my skill set on a on a on a greater stage, anxiety kept me from really doing that. That fear of failure, that fear of using my voice, that fear of who's going to see me, who's going to accept me, who's going to embrace me. Can I do this? You know, all of that really caused me to kind of, you know, stay suppressed in my gifts and stay suppressed in my abilities. And so before doing any of this, um, I would say what the mark on my forehead was fear. <laughs> it was fear for sure. Yeah. And that really is what a lot of women are struggling with, right? Or either they've had to come face to face with, because whenever you are pursuing something that's bigger than you, right? Fear is always there, you know, staring at you, speaking to you, trying to intimidate you. So how, so what were some things that you did, right? Because I know that you have, you know, your background in therapy and counseling, and you've been able to journey even in the corporate world and in ministry and, you know, throughout like the different like roles that you play and the different experiences you've walked through. Um, how did you overcome that fear? Like what were some practical things that you had to do or some deep work that had to be done in order to actually say yes? Yeah. So for me, my motivation has always been the Lord. So, you know, I can, in order for me to really overcome some things and to, to really face things, it's really tied to the intimacy I have with God, you know, I think a lot of people sometimes they they think that I have to look within myself to find that that courage or I have to look within myself to find that that confidence but ultimately it comes from your relationship with the Lord. He gives you the confidence to be able to pursue things. He gives you the okay to move forward and cultivating that intimacy and my identity and all those different things in my relationship with God is what gave me that courage. I truly would have never been able to do half the things I've done in my lifetime without that coming from a deep place of relationship and devotion with the Lord. So number one, that first step, I tell anyone, the foundation of who I am has been founded in my relationship with God. And that is the only way that I'm able to do what I do today. And then second, self-confrontation self-confrontation all the way. We don't like to face ourselves, right? Because when we face ourselves, you realize, man, that's in my heart. Man, that's a character flaw within me. Man, you know, you start to really see some of those areas where you fall short and shame likes to speak during that time right? I'm confronting areas within myself that I know are barriers to where I desire to go, where God has highlighted areas within me that I know I need to move forward and I know I need to deal with. And so now I'm confronting those things, but shame begins to say to you that something's wrong with me, right? Because I'm seeing these things come up. Guilt, sometimes we, 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 we mix up the definitions of guilt and shame, right? Guilt says I've done something wrong. Right. That's that's right. I'm guilty. I did it wrong. You know, I, I told a fib, you know, if Kalia hits her brother, she may feel guilty for hitting her brother because she knows it's she knows it's wrong. Right. If my daughter Kalia does that, she knows it's wrong. And so I can say, Kalia, you did something wrong and she can feel guilty, but she's not going to feel ashamed as if something's wrong with her because she made a mistake. 
because she has a barrier within her from trauma or childhood or different things of that nature that caused her to respond a certain way. And so that self-confrontation it helps us to be able to face ourselves, but then you also have to ensure that shame doesn't start to speak to you to become a barrier to the work that you're trying to do, right? And so for me, it was my devotion with the Lord and then self-confrontation and not allowing shame to overshadow the work that I was doing. That is so good. (laughs) Um, What I heard too was like, you know, having, having that, you know, intimacy with the Lord, right. He is the foundation. And then even with secondly, how you said that you have to be brave enough, right. To confront yourself. Right. Um, and as you were talking, I thought about, it's even important to make sure that you have a healthy relationship with yourself as well. And how, how you so beautifully, you know, described the, the difference between guilt and shame. And right now I'm reading a book with my daughters and, and they're learning how to discern, you know, lies from truth. And the author shared that here's how, you know, something is a lie and something is the truth. And she explained that lies are sticky feelings. Lies are sticky feelings to where if you have a feeling, right, you're sad. But if you're sad all the time, even when you do good, you're sad. Even when you make, you know, like good grades, you're sad. Then that is not from the Lord. And that aligns with what you were saying in regards to shame, because I see women where they come to the place of like, okay, I'm ready for the healing. I'm ready to do the thing. I'm ready to say yes. So we had some technical difficulties, as you can see, but you know what? We're going to continue to carry on and have this amazing conversation. Um, So we were talking about sticky feelings and guilt and shame, and I just thought that was a beautiful, um, you know, explanation how they shared, you know, the difference between guilt and shame. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Did you want to say something? Yeah, I was going to say, um, I think just kind of that example that you just gave is really important to know because sometimes I like that you said sticky feelings, right? Because these are feelings that like to stick and they shouldn't be there. And I think when it comes to like shame and guilt and different things of that nature, we like to take a hold of those things. And as we take a hold of those things, we actually think that we're doing this work right to overcome them but we get distracted by them and they become larger belief systems in the larger schemes of things. And now you realize, oh, well, I thought I was facing this, but now I've, I've taken on this on my identity. So now I need to confront this. And it becomes more of a distraction to the actual work that you're trying to do in the first place. Right. Mm, that's good. Cause it just brings you back to the beginning. Right. And those type of lies wants to keep you stuck. And if you keep rehearsing that narrative in your mind, you will stay stuck. And that's why I love that you've given, you know, your life work to being able to help women get unstuck. So with the clients that you help coach, right, I'm sure you've coached a lot of different women. Has there been a common thread or theme that women are struggling with when it comes to their mindset? The biggest thing that a lot of women struggle with truly is belief. Um, I think that there's been in life so much rejection, um, so many hurdles that as women we have to overcome, um, so much fighting with your, you know, internally with your identity, um, all of these different barriers that we're constantly facing, you know, to show up, you know, comparison, what this person is doing, am I behind, you know, does my life look like this? Or will I, you know, questioning, will I ever become this and all these different things. And so it really boils down to belief and what you believe about yourself, but then also what you believe is possible for yourself. I've seen so many people tap out um, with what God has called them to do, who God has called them to be, because people aren't applauding it. 
And so because we don't necessarily have the applause of others or the validation from others, we tap out and we quit on God's original instruction to us. You know, we can go through a season of feeling very confident and, you know, very clear and feel as if, okay, I do know what I'm called to do, or I do know what God is, you know, telling me to do. But then as soon as we don't get that validation or we don't get that applause and that rejection from childhood begins to creep back in our hearts and all the things that you know, we had to go through when we were the outcast and we were the black sheep and all this different stuff starts to creep back in our heart. And we forget that we've made progress, even though we may be in a season where the progress doesn't look the same. Right. And so a lot of women that I do work with, it's not that they don't have um, any accomplishments under their belt. It's not that they don't have any a skill set at all, or they haven't, you know, they haven't made progress professionally or personally. It's that their belief became distorted in what they believe about themselves and what's capable for themselves. And so a lot of the work that I've done is helping them to regain the right belief system. We have to shift your mindset to believe again in who you are. We have to shift your mindset to um, go, you know, to move away from these lies that you've allowed yourself to meditate on and ruminate on and replace those things with truth again. And so the the biggest thing and some of the sometimes the common denominator truly is belief. That is what I would say has been a common theme. No, oh, that is so rich and it's so um valid because I was just even having a conversation, you know, with my husband today and, you know, we were talking about that it's time to come back to being pleased with knowing that you're being obedient to God, right? And you're being obedient to an audience of one. And I feel like, you know, even just in this new year, right, that there is a special stage, there's special opportunities, there's special rooms and spaces and tables that the Lord is wanting us as women to occupy. But in order for us to occupy them and to be able to sustain whatever role we're having in these opportunities, we have to make sure that we're doing it for one, right? We're doing it for the Lord because, um, I, you know, in our, in our world today, we're doing it for other people. And how you were saying that like a lot of women stop because they're not getting the affirmation that they believe that they should get. And I could say that's even been me too. It's like, well, my friend isn't saying this or they're not calling this out. Like, is it there? And it's just like, it goes back to what you said. What was your foundation? Was that place of understanding that my identity can never be changed with the Lord. I will always be that way. And I think just having that se healthy separation helps us to be confident and brave. Yeah, I, you know, I'm I'm really grateful. One of the things I always um, go back to, and I talk to my husband about this a lot too, is I'm really grateful for the season that I had where it was just me and God. Because in that season, I literally remember I used to sit in, uh, we lived in Hyde Park in the Chicago area. Um, and I used to sit in my Juliet balcony window, this big ba balcony window, and I would literally just turn worship music on and I would just cry out to the Lord. I would just cry out to the Lord. I would sit hours at his feet. And I'm really grateful for that season because that is a season where I really allowed the Lord to just affirm me. And I didn't necessarily allow the voices of others to be louder than the voice of God. And I truly learned in that season that God has to be my core and my foundation, because if not, I will sway with the audience that he gives me. If they applaud me one day, I'll go in that direction. If they applaud me this day, I'll go in that direction. And if I don't get the applause, I'll have confusion. And so I'm really grateful that my foundation was built there because that that is what has sustained me for sure. So what would you say, just even coming from that, like, let's say a woman has not had a season where yeah. she has been affirmed in that, because a lot of us will go out and do stuff and be like, and put God's name on it. But we know inside, <laughs> we're not even internally prepared. And it's just like, you just going at you just doing stuff, right? So how would you encourage a woman right now who who knows their call, their call to coach, their call to lead, yeah. their call to speak, but they feel like they need to rebuild that time with the Lord to help propel them into the future? Like they're hungering mm -hmm. after that intimacy, even in the midst of doing things. 
Yeah, you have to prioritize. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most important thing is that we think, oh, I don't have time. I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to read my Bible. I don't have time yeah. to sit with the Lord or, you know, everything is rushed. But you realize you prioritize your hair getting done. That's true. Your nails. You prioritize, <laughs> listen, you prioritize getting them nails done, you know, and you will prioritize sitting down and writing a text message or having a FaceTime call. And so you really have to realize that relationship with God doesn't have to be so complex. And I think that mm -hmm. sometimes people think of it as it has to be this grand thing. And I got to set aside and pray for three hours. And, mm -hmm. you know, I got to do all this stuff, but it's really about having relationship. How do you have relationship with other people is the mm -hmm. same way that you can have a relationship with the Lord. And that's mm -hmm. really just being intentional about communion, having conversation, talking mm -hmm. with him on a daily basis, including him in your plans and asking him questions. What do you think about mm -hmm. this? What do you think about that? And as mm -hmm. you're doing that, at the same time of pursuing your purpose or pursuing your calling or getting clear on who you are, then you're making sure that these other things don't take the front seat and God takes the back seat. But you mm -hmm. still you are allowing him to drive you as yeah. you are pursuing the other things in which he has called you to do, because mm -hmm. ultimately it's all because of him anyway. Right. Anyway, I'm, I'm doing yeah. all of this, you know, for him anyway. So let me let him drive. And he'll take me to my destination as I'm pursuing my purpose, mm -hmm. pursuing my calling and pursuing these other areas of my life. That's so good. And what I'm yeah. hearing is good things in order, right? I think yeah. we want to take and eat it too. And it's just like, no, <laughs> at the end of the day, this is a community for, you know, Christian women who are like, mm -hmm. hey, I'm ready to do this. And yeah. um, if we're going to say that we believe in God and we trust him and God, we give you our lives and we're not even giving him permission to lead us, then what are we mm -hmm. doing? What are we doing? Yeah. So just even moving into, you know, coaching and how you coach women with just even hearing just the wealth of wisdom um, that you've given us with your journey and with working with clients and what you're seeing. Are you able to think of a client, even just from the conversation that we've had, who was yeah. struggling um, with, you know, belief and with being able to overcome guilt and shame in their career and being able to believe mm -hmm. God for more. Um, so are you able to share a client with us um, and how their experience with you was? Yeah. So I actually had this client um, that came to me and she had been in her position for about five years and she was at a um, kind of like this crossroad. Like, what do I do from here? I don't feel like, you know, there's much opportunity for growth in my current position. And I know that I have more in me than, you know, my boss or my manager or whatnot than they see. And one of the things too, that I had to help her also understand is the part that she played in her stagnation. So sometimes we like to point the, p the finger at, you know, you did this, you're not allowing me to do this. You're not, you're not, you know, opening up the opportunities and it's okay to say and to acknowledge that sometimes there are obstacles, you know, in the way of the growth that you desire to see. But then we also have to acknowledge the part that I'm playing in my own stagnation. And we really had to deal with the fact that she had just got complacent and comfortable and she was not willing to stand up and speak up and own what she wanted. That's one of the things we have to really do. Because we can sit there and say things like, oh, I desire this, or I desire that, or I have a dream about this, or I have a dream about that, or God gave me this, or God gave me that, or my friend told me this, or my friend told me that. But if you're not owning it, if you're not stepping into it and you're not owning it, it's still just going to be an option, a dream, a conversation. It's no movement or momentum to it. And so we had to deal with the fact that she had become complacent in where she was. And so as we work through some of these barriers and we really allowed her to confront that self-confrontation, confronting herself, um, growing in self-awareness, confronting the fears that are associated with really moving forward and really um, uh, taking initiative uh, for the things that she wants and different things of that nature, after we done we did some of that work, she then grew in her confidence, right? So, and let's just backtrack a little bit. Doing all of that can bring clarity as well to the direction that you desire to go in, 
right? We are always going to be multifaceted, multi-gifted. There's a lot of things I can be doing. There's a lot of gifts that God has given me. There's a lot of, there's a skill set that I've built up. I have talents, all these different things, but what direction do I really go in with all of this stuff? <laughs> and so as you, you know, self-confront and as you really work through those things, it helps to bring clarity to a lot of the confusion and the chaos of what's next. And so once we gain that clarity, we were then able to create a, a, a success plan for her, right? Here's what I do. Here's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to update my resume because now I know the direction in which I want to go into, right? I'm then going to start reaching out to have some conversations with um, directors and different things of that nature at my job. I'm. She wanted to actually switch positions, switch departments. And so we created a plan for her to do that. Let's have some coffee chats. Let me overcome this fear of having conversations with people that have the um have the 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 power within their hand to open the door for my next right so i'm going to have some chit chats i'm going to overcome myself overcome some of these fears overcome the stagnation and i'm going to actually put movement to the desires that i want to see for my life and so we did that she started to have these conversations. She started to grow in her confidence. She started to really, you know, do the things that were necessary. And then what happened was she had the right conversation with the right person at the right time. And she actually got a promotion and an $8,000 raise at her job because of the work that she did. And that is what happens when you're willing not only to just invest in yourself, but confront those areas and those barriers. Yeah. Wow. 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 A common word, right, was clarity as you were talking and just how taking what's in your brain, right, and being able to like, you know, wrestle through that, put it on paper and realize, okay, what is really sabotaging me, right? What what mindsets, what belief systems am I coming into agreement with that's causing me to not be able to have these conversations or to be able to stand up for myself. And I think that um, it's so important, especially for women to feel empowered, you know, to be able to uh, speak up, you know, to be able to stand up and defend what they know is theirs. And I love that too. And what's even great, like even, you know, to all of our listeners who's tuning in, I'm sure you see that Raven is really grace to call out fact and truth, right? I think too of being, and that's like the part of being able to be a, a, a coach, right? Is that you're able to figure out um, your style, right? And how you were talking about talents and skills and even just your spiritual giftings and being able to put all of that into a pot and being able to learn and grow with that of knowing that I don't have to neglect certain parts of my nature or my giftings in order for me to operate out of my skill um, or my talents. So what would you say, even with uh, um, this last question here of what would you say is the biggest mistakes that women make when they, when they decide uh, to become a life coach, right? Cause some of them, they've never made that investment in themselves. They feel like they're not qualified. Um, and they've never really even actually invested in their growth, right? Um, so what have you learned in your own experience with having a coach or a therapist that allows you to be more successful? So just even sharing the benefits of investing in your growth and how it's helped you. Yeah, I truly believe that every coach needs a coach, every Therapist needs a therapist. Every mentor needs a mentor. Every leader needs a leader. And so what people don't really truly understand is that wherever you seed an investment, your heart is going to follow, right? And when you think about the heart, you're thinking about your belief system. You're thinking about your mindset. You're thinking about your behaviors. You're thinking about your reactions. You're thinking about your emotions. And so if you're seeding in the direction in which you want to go and you're seeding investment of time, you're seeding um, uh, whatever that looks like, whatever you're seeding into, you're scheduling an appointment with a person, you are, you are allowing your, your heart to follow that seed meaning your whole entire world begins to align with the direction you see yourself going into. And so you have to be willing to seed your investment, 
seed your time in the direction you want to go. And a lot of times when you make that investment, you're cutting off your process time. I, if I didn't have a mentor and I'm so grateful for the mentor that I have, she helps to cut off time of me trying to figure it out because she's already figured it out. Right. And so there's a learning curve that I won't have to experience because she went through it and she's allowing me to cut off some of that processed time that would take me, you know, 10 years now takes me three or that would take me three years now takes me six months. And so it's important that you do have those that can pour into you. But I'm also um, a believer in being a forever student. You have to understand that in this lifetime, we never arrive. I do not believe we'll ever arrive because we are imperfect human beings. And at every season of life, we're going to experience something else that we have to learn. And so you have to be willing to be a forever student learning at any cost possible. I need to learn because learning leads to growth and you are stagnating yourself if you're not willing to learn from others and also invest in your own growth. So that's a that's a plan for stagnation. It's not a plan for success. It's a plan for stagnation if you're not willing to learn. Yeah, yeah. And that right there is truth, right? Because I think too, we can, re we can achieve a certain level of success and become even an expert, you know, mm -hmm. in a certain field and still kind of be stubborn and be like, I already know it. Mm. She's a new doctor <laughs> who's telling me she, it's like, no, I've been doing this for 30 plus years. No, right. you still need to keep space in your heart and in your mind to be able to receive, Hey, you know what? Maybe I have been thinking about this, you know, like mm -hmm. in a, in a unhealthy way. Maybe I am putting too much pressure on myself. Maybe I could do it this way. So I love how you broke that down. And I kind of have a selfish question I want to ask. It's not selfish, <laughs> but I'm sure it will help other women. But I think what's been really cool in watching your journey personally of just how you have really given yourself permission to learn, grow, and also fail and get back up. You mm -hmm. have been a woman that continues to show up from the moment I met you and seen <laughs> you start into like business. And it was just like, man, like your level of even just determination of knowing that, okay, God, what you've told me, I'm going to keep going after. Yeah. Um, and even just like how I share that you were also in the corporate world, right? Mm -hmm. You also are a counselor. You and your husband are also uh, ministry leaders, right? You guys lead a quarterly hub to where you're equipping people in their spiritual gifts and sending them out. So how has it been? Cause I think there's even listeners right now who are like, mm -hmm. man, I'm multi-talented. Like I love coaching and business, but I also love ministry. I also like fashion. Like yeah. how have you been able to refine your gift to where you're able to be the mindset coach, Raven Knoll, and you're also able to be the prophetess Raven Knoll, and you're yeah. able to be the mentor with your prophetic arrow community. Like how have you been able to give yourself fully to these separate roles without losing yeah. your nature mm -hmm. and like, you know, like, yeah. that's, a that's a I good have. question. I love that. <laughs> that's a good question. Um, well, I think first and foremost, I have truly anchored my identity and knowing that first I am a daughter of God. Yeah. That is the first step. And that can be very complex because mm -hmm. you think about when you, you think about your childhood and your up upbringing, I didn't grow up mm -hmm. in a very healthy environment. I grew up in a very mm -hmm. broken environment. I was born to a single mother. She was 18 years old when she had me. My father was overseas. Long mm -hmm. story. Didn't even know I existed. He didn't meet me till I was about wow. eight or nine months old. And so I didn't grow up in a very healthy, sustainable environment where I had the the best picture of what a mother was or a best picture of what a father was or the best picture of what it was to be a daughter. And so I had mm -hmm. to really push the reset button on my understanding of what it was to receive love from a father and also position myself as a daughter to him. And so I literally had to be discipled by God and what it looked like to be a, a lover of him and receive love of him from him. Mm -hmm. And so that is a journey that is very personal mm -hmm. and it's a journey that is very painful. 
-hmm. And it's a journey that's very revealing. Mm -hmm. And you have to be able to withstand under the pressure of what it looks like to be undone. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times we want to, we want to exit. Okay. I think I'm half baked, but I'm not fully done. And so you have to be able to stand under the pressure of being undone, but it's ugly, it's messy, it's muddy, it's filthy, and it's necessary. Mm -hmm. And so that is really where I had to find my foundation. But then once I found my foundation and being a daughter, God said, okay, you know that you are a daughter of mine and that is that that foundation is anchored and it's stable. Now I'm going to reveal to you what else I've made you. I've made you a prophet. Yeah. And so being a prophet is a career. Yeah. It's the (laughs) fullness of who I am. (laughs) You know, before I'm a counselor, I'm a prophet. Before I'm a coach, I'm a prophet. Before I'm a ministry leader, I'm a prophet. Before Mm -hmm. I'm anything else working in corporate, I'm a prophet. So everything that I do comes from the place of being a daughter first and then a prophet. It is Mm -hmm. who I am. And Mm -hmm. so I approach everything that I do, even on this, you know, on this call, I'm Mm -hmm. setting order, but that's the nature of a prophet. Yeah. You know, it's who it comes Mm -hmm. from. It flows from who I am. I'm not separately all these things. It's a stream of the impact Mm -hmm. God has called me to make in the earth from being Mm -hmm. a prophet. It's an arrow in every area. Yeah. I'm being shot in this area, this area, this area. So the way that I'm actually able to function in the many hats that I wear and the, and not quitting when things get rough and going through turmoil and successes and and failures and high highs and low lows is knowing who I am at my core. Yeah. And knowing that everything else is birthed through that. Mm -hmm. Nothing, you know, nothing is, is I'm not a counselor and I, I fell at being a counselor. Man, I failed, but I'm a daughter. So if I fail, yeah. what does that mean? That means I get back up and I keep going. A just man falls seven times, but he gets back up. So I'm going to learn from this, but God still mm-hmm. said I'm his daughter. So that means I still have work to do and I'm still his prophet. Therefore, I still have work yeah. in the earth to accomplish. Mm-hmm. So failure really is a personal, it's a decision. I can look yeah. at it as, it's a part of my identity or I can look at it as a part of my growth and my development and my evolution and it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. So that is kind of how I look at who I am and what God has called me to do and how I continue mm-hmm. to move forward in all the things in which he would direct me to do. Bam. Okay, y'all. <laughs> listen. Because I love listening to her because as you guys can hear, it's like, listening to her, you feel like you can conquer the world. Right. And it's not from a place of like, let me go out here and get it and prove (laughs) to everybody. It's just this beautiful flow, this natural ebb and flow of knowing, okay, I'm coming back to the source. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm drinking, I'm going out. And just from the place of your identity as a daughter of God and a prophet. And I just, even, even since now, even just with people who are listening, it's going back and asking God, who am I? Mm-hmm. Who do you say that I am? Yeah. And being able to be secure in that. Cause again, we are daughters of God that will never change whether people say we are or not. And then also right. knowing, okay, God, what is this, this grace or this gift that you've yeah. given me? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And knowing that, okay, wherever I go, God, if you've given me the gift of wisdom, if you've given me the gift of the words of knowledge, it's like, okay, when I'm on a coaching call, my antennas are going Mm -hmm. up and God, because he's made me that way, I'm going to be successful with my clients because I'm trusting in his ability to give me the words of wisdom, Mm -hmm. you know, to help shape a package for them that's going to hit them. And it just shows too, like, thank you, Lord. We don't got to do this alone. No, It's not something that God is hiding from us. Or he just is like, well, I hope she finds out. He's like, (laughs) girl, it's here. It's right here. And my word it's right here in our intimacy together. So y'all. Okay. So as you can hear, just from our conversation, I'm sure many of you guys are like, I want more of this. Well, (laughs) I have good news. Because like I shared, Raven Knoll is a part of the faculty of Called Women, y'all. So this is not going to be the last time that you hear from her or you see her. We actually have a Calling Clarity boot camp 
that Raven Knoll is going to be um, teaching and sharing. It's going to be a one day uh, workshop where she's going to come and show you how to get clarity when it comes to understanding your call, knowing what am I called to? What are the steps that I need to take in order to get clear on what it is that um, I have the gift to do? So more details of that uh, boot camp is going to be listed in the show notes. If you're listening live right now or even in 2025, 2026, this <laughs> woman going to be a long, a long, beautiful, endless journey. Amen. Um, so whatever time of the year or any year that you are tuning in, you still will be able to have access to, uh, you know, this camp. So Raven, I would love for you to just share with our audience, how can they stay in contact with you? How can they learn more about what you're doing, support, be a part of? Um, mm -hmm. So I'd love for you to I would love for you to share that information. Yeah. Um, so on most social media uh, platforms, Instagram, um, uh, threads, YouTube, mm -hmm. Facebook, you can find me at Raven C. Knoll. Um, mm -hmm. And then you can also visit my website at www.ravencnoll.com um, mm -hmm. to be able to connect with me. You can join my email list. You can shoot me a DM, whatever you like to do, mm -hmm. but you'll typically find me Raven C. Knoll, wherever you put in the search, the search engine. <laughs> yeah. You will see her. Cause I was like, Girl, you got a whole list. When I Googled you, look, I Google her. So if you just type in her name in Google, all of her resources, even episode stuff that she's done, podcasts that she has and everything like that, you guys can definitely get in contact with her. So Raven, thank you so much for being a part of this conversation and we'll talk soon. Yeah. Thank you for having me. What did you think of today's episode? I hope you loved it as much as I did. If you found any value in this podcast, it would mean the world to me if you downloaded this episode by hitting that little down arrow wherever you're listening. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit the subscribe button. If you have any big takeaways from today's episode, feel free to share it with a friend that you think would benefit from this episode. I absolutely love hearing how you feel about the episodes that I'm sharing and creating for you. So feel free to tag me on social media with any truths or breakthroughs that you have received. I love reading what you find the most value in. Thank you again for being here today. And I pray that you felt the love of God through today's episode. And always remember that you belong in God's story.